Hi, everyone, and happy Tuesday to you. We've got a lot going on in the weather world, from two tropical systems to watch in the Atlantic, plus a major cool down for many in the southeast, and I'm taking a closer look at what you can expect for October. Let's get right to it. I know you're very busy monitoring a lot right now, including a soggy, soggy day across South Georgia into Florida. It's that area that continues to get the bulk of the rain across the east coast. But you see, as we look up toward the top part of your screen here, the satellite closer to home in the Gulf, it shows just a mess right now. I'm not expecting anything tropical, but I do think that's a sign of things to come as we go deeper into October. More in particular, the pattern toward mid-October will favor some threats or some activity there in the Gulf as we get these progressive cold fronts that come through that can a lot of times give us that threat for more activity. Let's show you what's going on in the world of weather right now. I'll show you this model in a second, really highlighting Felipe and what's yet to be Rena will be our next named tropical system. Felipe Base kind of doing some weird things here moving west. Could bring some tropical downpours to the islands, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, maybe even Turks and Caicos in the Bahamas, and may try to meander closer to the United States. Right now, it looks to be very weak. Lots and lots of wind shear here with the way the jet stream's oriented and an old frontal boundary. But Rena actually looks like it's going to curve up and become a major hurricane. Let me show you what's happening right now. This is the ensembles of the Europeans showing Felipe and what's yet to be Rena toward the south right Right there. Notice how they take kind of opposite directions here. Arena becoming more uh, of a defined system, whereas Felipe kind of just meanders on toward the west right here. And uh, as we move forward into next week, this will be about a week from now, uh, we have that system curving out east of Bermuda. And whatever happens to Felipe kind of just dissolves out here east of the Turks and Caicos. Let me show you the GFS solution to this. There would be Felipe. There's developing Rena right there. Uh, you can see as we move forward in a time, Felipe kind of dissolves away, loses a lot of its tropical characteristics, and likely becomes just a remnant low, but could bring some tropical downpours here to Puerto Rico by the time we get to the weekend. So heads up there, possibly the Dominican Republic, whereas this developing tropical system really deepening. This would be Cat 1, Cat 2, possibly getting stronger to Cat 4 or 5 here by the time we get to next Tuesday, moving off toward the north and west. Felipe kind of just hanging out here, or remnants thereof. This would be the middle of next week, about about a week from right now, models show it kind of meandering off the southeast coast, whatever it is, and then finally moving up here off the Outer Banks. So the remnants of Felipe may just kind of hang out for a week or so as it moves on through, and the GFS doesn't really have any more notable threats beyond that. As far as temperatures are concerned, we've got uh, mild temperatures today, but tomorrow many in the southeast are going to feel a lot like November type weather. Reason being, we've got uh, quite a bit of uh, northeast winds locking in. So drizzle will be the main theme in the Carolinas. Heavier rain towards South Georgia and Florida here. Let me navigate into Wednesday. So as you're waking up, there'll be some cloud cover, likely some drizzle here and there. But look at all this heavy rain toward Brunswick, into Daytona, Central Florida, into Orlando. Just can't catch a break with the rain. You get more and more of those showers moving on through while this northeast wind really just locks in the cloud cover and the cooler temperatures for areas like Charlotte, Greenville, Asheville. Check this out. So today we're mild in the upper 70s. Check out tomorrow's high temperatures. This is midday Wednesday, barely getting to 70 in Greenville, 71 in Charlotte, 60 in Asheville, and that cooler, more comfortable air stretching all the way to Savannah, Georgia at 72. We got 69 to 70 in Atlanta. So this wedge of cooler air, those northeast winds making many across Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas feel a little bit more like November type weather along with those cooler humidity and lower temperatures. Look at Orlando, 77 degrees Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours. That's pretty unheard of. That'd be nice to be uh, <laughs> seeing uh, the parks there in Orlando. As we go into Thursday, it's going to be mild again. 70s across the southeast, maybe 80 in central Florida. You can deal with 80, right, in Orlando to Tampa, 78 for a high. As we go into Friday, it's hard to shake these tight patterns. Waking up to the 50s and 60s, it does look to be a bit warmer, upper 70s, closer to 80 going into the weekend. With this warmth does come a chance for severe weather for some. Toward the Midwest, we have an upper level low that's cut off from the jet stream, and that's likely leading to some severe weather today and tomorrow, stretching as far south as Nashville, Tennessee, and through Kentucky. And when we specifically look at the tornado threat, there is a chance of that up toward the Midwest today. So we'll have to look out for
for that. Uh, elsewhere, as we go into day two, that probability of tornado less than 2% in all areas of the United States, but certainly some wind gusts and some hail possible from Kentucky to Nashville. Let's take a closer look at the drought because as we move through, it's been so, so dry. This is the latest from NOAA right now looking at the drought removal being possible here. So yeah, in the near term, the month shows we're going to be pretty dry uh, across a good bit of the United States. But late October, National Hurricane Center, uh, I mean, the NOAA uh, area is showing possibly a better chance for rain in these areas that are so drought stricken. We could have some relief finally for you folks in Louisiana and Texas that have been so, so dry. It's all about central Florida and Georgia for the heaviest rain over the next couple of days. It's feast or famine in the southeast. Two, three, four inches of rain from Orlando, Tampa, up through Jacksonville Beach into Savannah, Georgia, while the Carolinas are getting just pennies here. We're talking a tenth of an inch or less. How about as we go into temperatures, uh, as we look out for the European model, yes, we cool down significantly the next 48 hours. I mean, we're talking temperatures some four to five, maybe even six degrees cooler than normal. But look what happens as we go into next week. Lots more red showing up here. That would indicate above average temperatures into next week. This gets us to October 3rd. I mean, we're talking about uh, well above average temperatures, as high as 10, 11 degrees above normal. That'd be October 3rd, 4th, going into the 5th. Uh, this would mean many more days in the mid, maybe even upper 80s across the southeast. Uh, NOAA actually highlighting this in their 8 to 14 day temperature outlook showing above normal temperatures. This would get us October 3rd through the 9th here. But things get interesting as we go into the latter half of the month here. This would be mid, let's see, this would be mid-October, so the 9th through the 21st. Notice how we've got uh, what's likely uh, Felipe just kind of meandering around offshore. Notice that spin, that spiral right in there off the Outer Banks. We would need to watch that for, you know, 10, 15 days from now. Felipe still kind of just won't go away, right? Just kind of sitting there. I'll have to watch that. But overall, it looks like some more progressive cold fronts on schedule start to try to come down our way by mid-October to where we finally might cool down. So the first half of October looks to be very, very warm for us. But as we go toward mid-month, I do see signs here of some of these more progressive cold fronts that would try to come our way and would watch that very closely. So folks, if you will, please let me know in the comments section where you're watching from like right now. I love hearing where you're from, and I'll tailor that forecast to you best I can. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I give early warnings to severe weather, including tornadoes, hurricanes, or wintry weather. I give you a reliable forecast you can count on. I've been doing weather on television for 20 years. I'm a certified chief meteorologist, and I'll give you a direct forecast. I'll tell you when it's time to worry. I'll give you a straight shot at what you can expect so you and your family can make plans. Have a good day, everybody.